Who's ready for some handcrafted holiday inspiration? So over the next 25 days, I am going to give you little bits of handcrafted inspiration for your holiday decor. If you haven't been here before, my name is Sonnet and I am the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video is day one of the handcrafted holiday. To kick off day one, I went into my stash. If you guys have been following me for a bit, you'll know that I was at the Habitat for Humanity. I found these two old cabinets. They had these four doors on them. My use of the cabinets was for my fusion paint display over at the Yield Goat. So the doors came off and I had them in my stash. I just didn't know what exactly what I could do with them. I got the idea of making them look like old mirrors and have some decoupage paper peeking through. So if you want to try to replicate this, what you're gonna need is looking glass. You'll need a bottle of half water, half vinegar, and then you're going to need some paper towel. You'll want to be outside to do this. So I take the vinegar water mixture and I spray it over the glass and then I take my paper towel and I start dabbing it. I want to make it where it's it has a little bit of um, water on there to repel the looking glass because you want it to look like almost like a mercury glass feel. Uh, what you're gonna notice too guys is that I'm outside in winter. So this is probably a better project in the summer um, or warmer weather. I realized that things were like the water even started to freeze a bit um, even with the vinegar in there so uh, next step I shake up the looking glass and I had a heck of a time getting this cap off now I got the cap off it's time to start spraying the looking glass and what I'm doing here is I am trying to just spray the perimeter of the glass my vision for this is that I want uh, whatever decoupage paper I'm using, I want it to peek through the center. So I spray the looking glass down, I take more of my paper towel and I dab the looking glass. Again, I want it to look more like that mercury glass or that type of feel. And then I also even wipe away the center. I don't want a lot of that looking glass right in the center. I really want my image to peek through. I want a little bit, but not a lot. So because I'm going to be layering here, I wipe away that center and I'm really working in layers. So I am working on two different doors at the same time. I want them to dry a bit in between coats. And on that one, the center, I felt like I almost wiped away too much. So when I layered again on that second door, I kind of blended it a little bit better. Um, again, I probably should have figured out what papers I was going to use on each one of these before I just went to town and started spraying and doing all the things. Uh, but I just knew that I wanted to place some type of paper on each of these. I just didn't have a vision of which ones yet. So I just went to town on all four doors. And again, in layers, I basically added a little bit more looking glass, a little bit more of the vinegar water mixture. I dabbed and I just kept doing it over and over until I got a good, it, where I felt like it was solid enough where it looked like, like a mirror glass and that the center was um, open enough where I could put decoupage paper and you could see through it. Here it is, the finished project. Nope, it's not finished, but the mercury look is complete. I let it dry overnight, and for starters, what I'm doing is I'm flipping it over, and we are gonna remove all the hardware from the door. So the handle, the hinges, um, there's also these brackets on here. They must have had like a maybe a hanging curtain on the inside of this door. They had the little brackets for that. So I went to town and I removed all of the hardware off of all four doors. And that took a bit just to get that done. 
Now that I got all the hardware off, I am using my IOD air dry clay. I'm just taking a little bit of clay and I'm going to fill in all the holes. I did not have any wood putty, so I thought this would be a perfect solution. Uh, so I am filling in all the holes on that, letting it dry, and then we're going to come back with the next step. I went into my decoupage papers and right away I pulled out the owl. I love this recycled paper. It's absolutely gorgeous and I thought it would look amazing on here. Now I should also mention that all the products I'm using in today's video you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. The first thing you want to do is lay out your paper, figure out where the image is, if it is in that center space that we left open, and then we are going to get rid of the excess paper. So I figured out exactly where I wanted it, and then what I did is I just took my fingernail and I marked on the, I kind of made a crease where I wanted to cut away the excess paper. From there, I grabbed my scissors and where that crease was, I cut along around the entire perimeter and it does not need to be perfect because it's on the back side and any imperfections are really going to be hid by that looking glass. I always save my excess paper. I laid it in there and I flipped it over to make sure it was exactly where I had wanted and it was a perfect fit, guys. Now it's time to decoupage. I'm using liquid patina uh, from DIY. It is my favorite decoupage medium to use with recycled paper. I've shown this on many videos, but what I like to do is figure out where I want my paper and I have it positioned. I pull the paper back and then I do what's called a starter strip. So I apply a nice even coat of liquid patina down lay my paper back down and I smooth it out and then I'm able to have it positioned in the spot where I want it and I can work my way down and this really helps you um, alleviate a lot of those wrinkles and it gives you better control over your decoupage paper uh, it's definitely worked for me and I recommend it to everyone that I talk to about applying uh, decoupage paper From there, then what I recommend doing is just applying a nice even coat of liquid patina over the entire backside to completely seal it. And then I'm going to set this aside, let it dry very thoroughly, and I am going to tackle the other three uh, doors the exact same way. Now that the owl is drying, I went back into my papers and I am using this rooster and hen. This is called Farm Animals and by far one of my favorite papers that Royce has. And I am using just the chickens on this uh, door and I do it the exact same way that I did the owl. So I just am going to show you what papers I've chose for the other doors. You guys remember last year's holiday release from Royce? This was in that release. It had a fox on one side and a bear on the other. And I used the bear for a different project. And you guys know I've been trying to use up my stash of goodies. And we are going to use the fox on this one. So for the fourth door, back in my stash, I found this paper. I used a portion of it um, this summer when I upcycled some bar stools, and I thought this was a perfect addition for this door. Now I am going to go back to the owl. We're gonna finish that one up for you, and then I'm going to um, finish the rest up and showcase those doors over the 25 days. So let's head over, um, and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to transform the actual door. 
After looking at that owl for quite a while, I finally determined the perfect color choice for the door was going to be a color that I mixed this past summer. I took Old 57 and Salty Kiss and I did a 50-50 mixture and that color was the perfect color for this door. Now, my vision here initially was I was going to apply one even coat to the entire piece, let that dry, then do a touch up. I always call it my one and a half coats. I was going to do a bit of wet distressing and then seal it. But as I was finishing up this uh, painting, I decided this screams painterly. And if you guys don't know what painterly is, it is the new DIY paint line. So Debbie Beard has now created painterly. It's an artistry paint and it really works with the clay based paints. It's kind of like peanut butter and jelly. They work perfectly together. So very similar where you need to seal it. So if you don't seal it, you can blend it just like you can with the clay base paints. It is similar to that of an acrylic, but it's better. So I am going to show you how I play around with it for the very first time in today's video. First and foremost, let me introduce you to the painterly line of paints you are going to find 12 vibrant colors and they are absolutely gorgeous. Plus Debbie Beard picked out the perfect names for each and every one of them. And they blend perfectly with the DIY clay base paints. Uh, today is the very first time that I am working with them. So I have not even had the opportunity to do anything other than what I'm testing out in today's video. So I should also say I was a little nervous because it's the first time I'm playing around with them. But after I did, I it has opened up so many ideas for me, you guys. And I cannot wait to show you in more videos of what I plan on doing with these. So um, here they are and let's get started on how I plan on using the colors. Did you guys notice I said colors? Well, initially all I was going to use was Dreamville. And my initial vision is I was going to just paint an accent color of Dreamville around the very perimeter of the frame and i did that and then i was looking at the owl and i decided i need to add a bit more color oh my gosh the owl is screaming pinks and yellows and that's when i got a bit more daring i grabbed the perfect pink and the perfect yellow and if you notice here i only dab a tiny little bit because I decided I wasn't going to add a ton. I just wanted to add a little bit of accent. And in the end, you guys, I needed a whole lot more than what was on this plate. I grabbed my paintbrush and I just started adding a little bit of the pink here and there. I wanted to blend it a little bit, like almost like dry brush it, I guess is what my vision in my head I wanted to add just a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of that pink, just around the perimeter uh, here and there. And then what I was planning on doing is once it all dried, I want to go back and I am going to wet distress a bit to bring back a little bit of that wood finish from underneath and just blend the pink and the yellow in a little bit. So a couple of thoughts here. After I did this, I thought, well, maybe I should have had my spray bottle and I should have been blending um, a little bit more into that clay base paint right away. So that is something I'm going to play around with in the future. Uh, the other thought, too, is I really like the look of the owl and how there's like kind of like some splatter on the owl. I thought that would have been kind of cool too, is to water the, you know, the excess of um, the painterly paint down just a tad and almost like do a splatter technique uh, like Lexi Grenzer does. She does that a lot. And I thought that would be very cool as well on the frame. 
Now these are all afterthoughts after I did this, but just kind of tips or ideas for you guys as you order your painterly plain paints and start playing around with it. That was a lot of peas. But as you start doing that, these are different things that you can definitely work with. I do the exact same thing with the yellow paint. I just dry brush it on here and there all around the entire frame and already I am liking how I not only had the original clay base paint but then I added that Dreamville and then I am adding the pinks and the yellows. I just think it's adding a little bit something different and more to the frame. Now I'm going to wet distress it here and there and I just break out an old rig that I had. I have it damp but not overly saturated and I just start rubbing over all the raised edges a little bit here and there and I realize that it wipes away the painterly paint just as easy as it does the clay base paint. So you have to be a little bit careful. Um, very quickly, I'm like, I don't wanna remove all of it. I want to just blend it and remove a bit of it. I work my way around the entire frame and like I said, I just, you know, wet distress it here and there, um, blend a little bit of it. And in the end, you guys, I absolutely love how this turned out. To finish off this project, I am using DIY's Clear Wax and the DIY Dark Wax. And by doing that, uh, using the clear wax first, then the dark wax, it just gives you better control over that dark wax. So I am using the JRV stencil brush and I never thought to use it for waxing as well but um, Jamie Ray made a comment on one of my pictures that they work perfect or it works perfect for waxing as well and I'm like I'm gonna try it and I love it I use the large brush to wax and it works perfect so I am applying one even coat of clear wax to the piece and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna add a bit of dark wax now that I applied the clear wax, I grab my dark waxing brush and I start applying just a nice even coat of the dark wax to this piece. And I am not going to go in too heavy or too thin, just as a nice even layer. Then I'm going to wipe away the excess with a piece of paper towel and I think this truly ties the entire piece together. I am loving lately um, that dark wax. Um, I've used uh, the Sweet Pickens dark oil wax. It just, I don't know what it is about this dark wax lately you guys, but I'm loving the Sweet Pickens oil wax and the DIY um, dark wax as well. It's just providing such a moody feel and I'm really loving it. What did you guys think of day one of the handcrafted holiday decor? I loved how that turned out. You guys, if you've been following along for a bit, you'll know that I was over at the Habitat for Humanity, found these cabinets for my paint display. Uh, they did have four doors and in today's video, that's what I used those four doors to start transforming them. Initially, I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I figured if I held on to them long enough, I would drum up some inspiration. My husband's like, get rid of them. I'm like, no, I can upcycle them in some way. And I did just that. So you can create your own Christmas gifts with old 
unwanted used items uh, and they can look completely transformed and custom and make an amazing gift for a friend or a loved one. So always keep that in mind. Now over the next 25 days, I am going to be giving you little tips and tricks on how to create your own handcrafted holiday decor, whether it be for your decorating, a Christmas gift, you name it, I'm going to come up with 25 ideas for you. On Mondays and Fridays, they will be in a long form video, so it's, you know, much more in depth. And then the rest of the days, I will be putting out shorts. So over here on YouTube, they'll be on in short form. And then over on Facebook, I'll be just throwing them in um, reels. So you can, if you're not here and you're there, you might catch it somewhere. Um, but if you're new to my channel and you haven't done so yet and you love the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so every Monday and Friday you'll be notified when I upload a video. And if you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and let me know what your thoughts are on the whole handcrafted holiday decor. All right, guys, you have yourselves a wonderful weekend and we will see you Monday. Bye.